guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Courtney and today I'm very excited because I am doing a new technique that I've never tried before called sublimation. You don't need very much to get started. It is easy to do and what I'm gonna be bringing you is tons of DIY gift ideas that you can start working on now, whether it be for Christmas, for birthdays, for anniversaries, for hostess gifts, lots of ideas. So I'm so excited to be partnering with Hippo to be able to do that. Now let's just get straight in to today's video. The two main things you are going to need for sublimation is some type of heat press, whether it be this, or if you have a Cricut Easy Press, that will work too, and then a printer. You have to have a designated printer for sublimation, so that means once you use it as sublimation, that's all you can use it for. There are tons of tutorials on YouTube of how you can convert printers, but this one right here is the Epson 2760. If I can get that to focus. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up and show you how easy it is to do with the inks. And then I'm gonna start working on some projects. To get this set up, I'm gonna be using the Hippo Sublimation Ink and it's super easy to do. So let me show you how quick and easy it is. My ink tank is right here, Oops, stand by. There we go. All right, so for this, it comes with some little gloves and then it comes with these little daubers here <laughs> and it's really easy to do. You just have to, got some scissors over here, probably not. Um, all right, gotta grab some scissors, I'll be right back. All right, grab some scissors. All right, so the ink comes like this and what you have here is a little dauber that all you have to do is when you lift the appropriate color, you just stick it down in there and you're good to go. So I'm gonna go and put the gloves on just as a precautionary uh, measure here because who wants to have a bunch of ink on their hands? Not me. All right, let's open up these lovely gloves. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with black. So I'm going to grab out the black ink, simply open the lid. Sorry that these gloves are so noisy. There we go. And then I'm just going to click it into place and let it do its thing. And I can hear it like going down. And then on the front side here, there are um, little levels. So you can kind of see the ink going up and filling up your tank. Here's the little uh, levers I was telling you about. So you can kind of see as the ink fills it up and it will just raise with the ink. I'm going to multitask and go ahead and put the Scion on as well since they both will fit side by side. While this is filling, you might be asking yourself, okay, can I use any kind of printer for this? No, again, you do need to have a designated printer for sublimation and once you put it to sublimation, it needs to stay at sublimation. So you can either start with a new printer or like I said, you can try to go ahead and convert a printer you might have into a sublimation only printer. While the ink is finishing up, I want to quickly again touch on the heat press. Now this is a heat press that I've got in this basket down here. I've got attachments to do cups and plates and things. Again, you if you don't have this, you can start with a Cricut press, but an iron will not work. It will not get hot enough. So you definitely either need this heat press or some type of heat press, or you can start off with your Cricut heat press if you have one of those. The third and final thing you will need will be some sublimation paper. This is a pack that came from Hippo. It's got 110 sheets. And as you can tell, it's got t-shirts and mugs and phone cases and masks and socks. So you can use this for all of your projects. And so that's what I will be using to make my projects today. Now, when you go to load your paper in the printer, you do want to make sure you load it correctly. Now, on one side of the paper, it is white. The other side kind of has a very light I would describe it as a pinkish tint. You wanna make sure all your designs are printed on the white side of the paper. 
Now that we have all the equipment ready to go, my next tip is for how to create designs, and that is to use canva.com. Now they do have a free um, portion of this that you can use, and it's tons of stuff. They have all kinds of clip arts. They have real pictures. You can do text. You can change colors. Lots of options in Canva. There is also a paid version. I do use the paid version because I do need a few more features when I am creating my content, but you can get everything you need done with just their basic free version. So definitely check out Canva because once you've created it in Canva, just select flyer as your project because it'll do the eight and a half by 11. And then you just download it and then print it out onto your your paper and from there you're ready to start getting your sublimation game on. Now we're ready to go ahead and print our design. Now here is the kicker as far as printing. If you're working with an image, it does not matter. Images are totally fine. However, if you are working with text in your design, when you go to print it out, you do need to toggle on the mirror or the flip horizontally. It's when you go to print, it should be in your print box, an option for you to flip the text. So this is kind of similar to the Cricut where you have to flip the text otherwise it's going to look a little wonky when you go to press this onto your items. For this first project, I'm going to be pressing a t-shirt and to get prepped for it, I'm just gonna take a piece of parchment paper and go ahead and put it down on my mat. And then you wanna take your t-shirt or whatever cloth item you might be using, whether it's a towel or a washcloth or socks, whatever it is, and go ahead and give it a quick press. Now I have my heat press set to 355. Um, I've seen a range of temperatures, a range of time limits. And so there was a little trial and error, but for the most part, I kind of got it figured out. So again, my temperature is 355. I'm going to press the t-shirt for about 10 seconds just to warm it up. From there, I'm going to go ahead and make sure to take a piece of parchment paper and put it inside of my t-shirt. Because if you just go and press a design on this, especially for t-shirts, the ink is going to lick, or sorry, not lick, it's going to um, go ahead and absorb through and it's going to latch onto the fibers on the back. And then you're going to have like some weird looking design on the back of your shirt. So just make sure you put some type of heat um, resistant paper in between your shirt to protect it. So once it's pressed, I've got the parchment paper inside of my shirt. I'm going to take my design, set it down, making sure that the text portion is what's down on the uh, t-shirt. And then I'm going to take another piece of parchment paper and go ahead and put it on top of my design. And then I'm ready to go ahead and press it. I end up pressing it for about 50 seconds and that's all it took. This next DIY gift idea would be perfect for a coworker, a boss, even a college student or just a student at home, and of course for your very own office. So here I'm just customizing two mouse pads, and like I said at the beginning of this video, everything I'm making in this video, I am gonna give away. There are two personalized items. I think you'll figure out those. Obviously, I'm not gonna give those away because nobody's gonna want somebody else's name on there. But anyway, um, stay tuned to the end. I'll tell you guys how to enter the giveaway. But I did make a fun kind of creative type person mouse pad as well as a fun Christmas one. And I just thought, you know what? You could make one for every season and just have a very festive little office. Now for this DIY gift idea, I'm gonna be making a little makeup bag or even a snack bag. This is a great gift for a teenager, maybe a first time mom or a mom with young kids. And for this, because it is a makeup bag, I am gonna go ahead and put a piece of parchment paper inside of the makeup bag. This was really 
thick fabric and I probably could have gotten away without having to do that step, but just to be safe. And then again, same process. I'm gonna press it first, put my design down, put some more parchment paper down, and then go ahead and press it again. Same temp, 355, again, 50 seconds. For this one, I'm gonna be using these washcloths and I grabbed seven of them and I'm going to do a day of the week. This is a great gift idea for anyone who wears makeup, especially perhaps teenagers or preteens that may be starting with makeup. And I just, again, designed in Canva, just did the days of the week as well as some eyelashes. And I went ahead and just put it in the corner, pressed it down. Now, as far as sublimation blanks go, you can find tons of them on Amazon. Just type in and search sublimation blanks and lots and lots will come up. I will make sure to link down below all the ones that I've used today, as well as all the designs I created um, down in the description box for you. Another fun gift idea is to make some fun and quirky socks. I mean, come on, who wouldn't want some crafting socks? That's what I made. I treated these socks just like a t-shirt. I put parchment paper in there, even though these were really thick socks, but think of all the possibilities of all the customized socks you could make. Another great DIY gift idea for a hostess or just for someone that you know is to make some home decor. Now this one is a little specific to crafters, but I went ahead and made a wooden pennant banner and it was super simple to do. I just stuck the design directly on there, a little parchment paper, and then I pressed it. Now one thing you do need to remember is when you are pressing these items and you go to lift up that press, the items will be hot. So just be very careful of that. Give them a couple seconds to cool down. But this was a very easy pennant banner to make and some craft room would look really cute with it. Now for this batch of gift ideas, you've got ornaments, earrings, and Apple watches. These would be great for all types of people. Ornaments are great for neighbors or for friends or coworkers or just families. You could personalize it. I did have an oopsie on the ornament. I forgot to flip the text and I had to go back in and redo that. But you could do earrings. These would be great for teacher gifts or friends and then Apple watch. Also a great idea, you could make them for different seasons and do like a birthday one and then give somebody several different seasons and all of them at once. It would be really fun. So lots of options as far as who could receive these gifts. And I will say this, the one thing I learned about this is that when you go to press on items that are not fabric, you're gonna wanna press a little bit longer so that the colors really come through and it saturates it. If you don't press it long enough and you don't have that heat right, you are gonna notice it being kind of faded, which is what happens in the mug that I'm about to do. I'll show that to you, but I do figure it out for the tumbler. So just keep that in mind when you're working with stuff other than fabric, you're gonna to wanna to press a little bit longer just to make sure those colors really take to the object. Thank you. 
Now I'm ready to move on to make a mug. Now this is a great gift for anybody because you can create a custom mug and then stuff it with hot chocolate or coffee or candies, whatever you want. Now this is super easy. My heat press came with the mug and tumbler attachment, so I just had to plug it in there. I created a design on Canva. I downloaded some cute little best friend fonts and then created a little best friend thing. And I'm gonna trim this out and then go ahead and attach it to the mug. I'm gonna use some heat resistant tape to attach this to the mug to make sure it holds in place make sure you use heat resistant don't go in there with scotch tape or duct tape because you'll be sorry so just make sure you get heat resistant tape and again what i learned here was i needed to press it longer the longer i pressed on items that specifically were not fabric the more the colors would show up they were more vibrant and bright but this mug just was a little faded for me and i am planning to redo it but I think it still turned out cute and it was still very easy to do. Now, tumblers, I mean, come on, who doesn't love a good tumbler? Now, on this one, I definitely pressed it long enough, and I think it turned out really, really cute. I did the same pattern. I took my design, wrapped it around, taped it on with some heat-resistant tape, made sure to press it long enough, and then I was good to go. And there you go, a ton of DIY gift ideas using sublimation. I have to say, this was my first time to do it and I absolutely love it. I found it very fast and easy and convenient to use and I definitely would recommend it. I will link everything down below that you can find in today's video, including products and designs that I created. Now, the giveaway. The giveaway, I'm gonna pop up a card here in just a minute. It'll have all the rules on there, everything you need to do. I'll be giving everything away that I made in today's video, except for the personalized items, which was the ornament and the color guard shirt. Those are definitely going to stay here at my house. But everything else, I am definitely giving away. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Stay tuned for the giveaway criteria. I will see you in the next one. Bye.